The last decade really is framed by the financial crisis and the most significant uh, outcome in the executive compensation world of that crisis were the reforms in the Dodd-Frank Act, which was primarily a financial regulatory uh, piece of legislation, but also impacted executive compensation uh, uh, practices at, at all public companies. And of the uh, reforms of the provisions of the Dodd-Frank Act that are notable in that regard, the most notable by far is say on pay. Now, I think one could make a good argument that say on pay has had a positive um, influence on executive pay practices. There's a consensus among commentators that that is the case. Uh, there are still pay critics, but say on pay has um, been different than most of the um, regulatory efforts before the crisis, which have had unintended consequences or no consequences at all. Um, say on pay really has had a positive impact. The other thing to note is the CEO pay ratio disclosure. The jury's out on that. My prediction is that it will not have much of an impact. The agency ownership issue is really an old issue. It goes back uh, maybe 20 or maybe even more than that years now. It was really highlighted by a book written by two academics, um, Bebchuk and Freed, called uh, Pay Without Performance, The Unfulfilled Promise of Executive Pay. And what they argued largely was that pay practices were unduly skewed um, in favor of executives uh, by reason of uh, uh, really direct or capture, the fact that uh, directors had um, a kind of allegiance or a lack of independence. That book, I think, led directly and indirectly to reforms involving director independence, most notably the director independence rules in the, uh, on the, on the uh, exchanges, New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ, but also some other director independence rules. And I think that um, those rules, together with uh, the very wide usage these days, almost universal, by public companies of independent compensation consultants, um, has led to a significant mitigation in the, um, in the agency issue and better pay practices. For me, the two most important factors that I, as the lawyer in the process, um, uh, pay attention to in designing executive pay practices um, are avoiding the creation of inappropriate incentives and making sure that the governance, um, the, the kind of get your hands dirty governance part of negotiating and documenting um, pay decisions gets done correctly. So in terms of inappropriate incentives, um, it barely needs to be said because we've had some very large crises uh, recently arising from what were arguably inappropriate incentive pay designs, and they can create bad incentives. Um, every company is different, and you really have to look at the business and the culture and the structure of a company to ensure that a, a practice that may be good for companies generally, it may be widely used, is um, appropriate for a, any given company. Secondly, on the process point, we've had um, um, our fair share of litigation around executive pay decisions, going back, of course, to the famous Disney um, litigation. Uh, where the board, uh, the compensation committee of Disney was a little embarrassed by the pay practices and we've had subsequent litigation around that issue. Um, there, there's really uh, little excuse for that. If the lawyers are paying attention to getting the governance uh, discussion correctly, making sure that the comp committee is informed and that their decisions are properly documented, you should be okay on that. So these are very difficult issues for corporations and boards. There are a multitude of them. It's, it's, a, it's an unbelievable list. You have Me Too, you have gender diversity, you have racial diversity, you have um, privacy rights, you have gun issues, you have trade issues, which have of course been in the, in the papers over the last couple of days. You've got immigration issues and their impact on labor. These are all very big and very difficult issues. Boards need to be very careful about picking the issues that they're going to focus on, um, making sure that they're sensitive to their various constituencies, including in particular employees, customers, regulators, as well as shareholders, um, and communicating carefully because one channel of communication 
is very difficult to use these days because of the divided nature of media and society um, to communicate in exactly the right way to all of your constituencies.